close, but not quite, but really, really close. Okay, kudos, because that's really close. My situation definitely is confusing, though. I don't uh, fault anyone for thinking it's confusing. Granted, a lot of it is only confusing to those um, outside of my community, the transmasculine community. But we are still such like a small part of uh, society overall that it uh, it checks out that people are confused. It checks out. So first part, yeah, it checks out. I am a mom. I actually gave birth to my biological son uh, before I started my transition. Since I don't uh, show my son in videos anymore, a lot of times when I, um, you know, talk about how I have a son, a biological son, people are like, well, where is it? Do you have custody? What happened? Yes, I have custody of my son. Unfortunately for all of those people out there, like, really rooting for my son to resent me for transitioning, um, he's entering middle school and yeah, um, it's a non-factor, he does not care. <laughs> my son gets straight A's, he has won awards for coding, he does fantastic, oh my god, I'm so proud, he's a drummer. The second part, um, I wouldn't, like, completely agree with, um, I wouldn't consider myself transitioning, um, I actually started my medical transition, um, a long time ago, like, I'm talking, like, eight or nine years ago, uh, contrary to belief, um, not every, uh, trans man who, like, starts testosterone by month three looks like Lou Ferrigno, you know what I mean? A lot of people get confused because I'm very androgynous looking, so they're, like, you know, confused as to if I mean, like, I'm starting my transition, you know, because I don't got a beard, shit like that. Um, or they usually think that maybe I'm transitioning from male to female. I started medically transitioning on hormones uh, back when I was 26 years old. I'm 34 now. I got top surgery when I was 28, I believe. And yeah, this is just what I look like. It's genetics, man. And yes, I am married to a man. That is my, oh, my sexy hunk of man right there. He is so fine. We've been married for like five years, I think now. I don't really know, honestly. I'm not good with the year thing. You guys know that. Um, and uh, we've been, I've known him for longer than that, probably like seven years. Now, a lot of people, uh, most people actually, are under the impression that, like, I got married to a man, had a son, and then decided um, that I was going to transition, um, which that is totally fine, because that is a lot of people's situations, but that isn't my situation, actually. Um, my husband did not meet me until I had already transitioned. I had already had top surgery. I was already on hormones. And the plot twist is this lumberjack of a man. He's a trans man like me, okay? And he started transitioning way after me. So imagine how much that grinds my gears, okay? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm so lucky he's mine. He's so handsome. But earlier when I mentioned how, like, um, there are certain things that, like, to people outside of my community, like, things that may be shocking, but within my community, it's just, like pretty normal. In my experience, the general consensus in society is they expect that trans men would um, obviously be in heterosexual relationships with women. And I say obviously because in a lot of people's minds, um, they just think like, well, if you're transitioning into a man, why would you transition into a man and do all that work and not date like a beautiful woman? But if you really like think about it for a second, that um, mindset is a little silly. Because nobody, like, goes on hormones and, like, has life-altering surgeries that, like, have huge risks. Just because they want to get some fly-ass honeys, like, that doesn't happen. It just doesn't happen. People typically access, you know, forms of medical transition, like, you know, for gender dysphoria in order to feel like their outside aligns with their inside. Like, it really has nothing to do uh, with wanting to date a certain gender. Like, uh, nobody's gonna change their entire life for that. <laughs> you could just be gay. But in my community, the transmasculine community, um, it's actually very common to see trans men with other trans men, with cis men. Most of my friends, not all, I have the same best friend since I was like, I think nine years old, okay? Nine years old, I've had the same best friend. She's a girl. Um, but a lot of my other friends and, you know, my husband, like, um, you know, are trans men. And I actually, it's, I think I can maybe think of like, two heterosexual ones. <laughs> I'm not saying that, like, I mean, obviously, obviously, there's, like, trans men who are straight and with women, obviously. I'm not trying to insinuate that, like, you know, that every single straight trans dude out there, like, you know, must have an attraction to men. Obviously, I'm not saying that. It's just, in my experience, um, I have rarely, very, very, very rarely run into heterosexual trans men. Uh, very rarely. There's actually some science behind it. Um, I know the proof of burden is on, like, the person talking, or they usually say poster or whatever. I'm not gonna go look for it. But there's a lot of, um, mythology or talk, I guess. It's really not mythology, because it really is a thing. Where for some trans men, not all, 
but some uh, testosterone does uh, maybe alter their orientation a little bit. If you go into bodybuilding message boards for cis men who are on, um, you know, HRT, hormone replacement therapy with testosterone, um, you will also find some talk of it in there. So it's got to be a thing. I don't know. But yeah, that's my story. It's confusing. I mean, and it gets more confusing. Like, I own a farm. Oh my god. I'm a business major in college who just made the president's list, mind you. <laughs> I have a dog that is 150 pounds and 5 foot 8 when she stands. The MJ lore, it's just, it's endless. That's what people call it, the MJ lore. I love that.